morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Lutheran. First of all, I want to ask if there are announcements, and I know there's at least one, Lois. Good morning. Uh, now that we've completed our faith fair, uh, I want to talk to you about Applefest. Uh, we're organizing our committees and tables and stuff like that. I'd like to have a meeting, and it'll be in the bulletin um, next week, uh, of, of the people that are volunteering on September 11th after the church service. Things are pretty well organized, however, I want everybody's input. Um, we are going to sell soup, and so I need quart jars. If you should happen to have quart jars, um, please save them and bring them that we can use them uh, that day. Uh, and, and hopefully you're working on your baskets. I've got two of mine done, so, uh, and I hope you're working on yours as well, because that's been a very popular thing at uh, our Apple Fest. And that's pretty much it, so, all right, thank you very much. We have another announcement. Yes. Um, Lloyd and I visited with him north in July, down in Kitman, in Delaware. We visited with him north in Delaware. July. And he asked me to tell everyone he said hello, he misses you all, and um, he's very content where he is. He's very close to his son and daughter in law, they're like 10 minutes away. And he has a nice little house down there and six foot tomato plants. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other announcements? I just want to mention that mayonnaise jars are about a quart, so save them. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seat at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 250 in the Lutheran Book of Worship, the Green Book.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, one and all. Our first lesson this morning is found in Isaiah chapter 58. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom will be like new day. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose water never fails. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, 
serving your own interests or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord. And I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of, the, of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 103, verses 1 to 8. We will read it responsively. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The second lesson this morning is found in the book of Hebrews beginning at the 12th, 12th chapter, beginning at verse 18. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and, voices whose, who, and, vo and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I trembled with fear. But you have come to the Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festive gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See, see that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they do not escape when they refuse the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit 
that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, but not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. children like to come up front? You were the winners last year. You may stay there if you want, whatever you're more comfortable with. I did get a little bit of news last week that you would be coming, so I just prepared something very special for you. So it's up to you, but you can see. In our scripture in Hebrews, we've been studying Hebrews, and to be honest with you, I had never studied Hebrews before, so I have been studying Hebrews, and it is the longest letter in the Bible, and we're not really quite sure who has written it. So it is interesting because it does, it's written to people that were just becoming Christians, and they had a lot of problems. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so um, in Hebrews, they talks today about being the last part of it, which Carol read, was talking about being in awe of God and in awe of, of all that he has done for us. And it was reminding the people that our faith should be like that. And so one of the things I looked at was the Hubble telescope. Hubble telescope was put in place in 1990, so it's been a while. It is as long as a school bus. And you've studied it at school? Have you studied or seen any pictures from the Hubble telescope? No? Well, you're going to today because I have some. There's also a website. Do you study science at school? Have you studied the constellations in the sky? How about the planets? Do you know about the planets, about Saturn, and not yet? So you're in for a big time. Now actually at night here in the Poconos, especially when it's dark, you can look up and see all the constellations in the sky. And there's this awesome place, if you haven't gone, and if any of you haven't gone, you should go to ESU, right? To East Stroudsburg University. They have a place called the Schisler Museum. Many have gone, and it has all kinds of amazing animals that are stuffed. I mean, a great big white bear, who is fabulous, and then all kinds of other animals there, too. And they're not behind glass, so you can really see them. But also, in the Schisler Museum is the planetarium. Have you ever gone to a planetarium? You would love it. So if it's a rainy day someday this week or whenever you're here, try to go to ESU and go in and see the Schistler Museum, which doesn't take that long. It's just all on one floor. But then you go into the planetarium and they actually show you the sky and all the planets and all of the stars and how they're reacting with each other. So it's a wonderful, wonderful lesson. We took our grandkids there and we've taken many groups there. Actually, we're going again um, to see it because it's just a wonderful place. So East Stroudsburg University, it's very easy to get to. But again, in Hebrews today, it talks about awe of God and all that he has created. And when I think back of my growing up years, I just had the constellations, finally the planets. How exciting was that? And then 
the Hubble telescope went out, and I actually watched, actually before the Hubble telescope, my husband and I watched a man walk on the moon. Was that crazy? You remember that? He walked on the moon, it was televised, and we were like, this can't be. You look up at the moon, you're like, I don't see him. I don't know. But it was amazing. So you're part of a wonderful world, wonderful world that God created for us to enjoy. So I don't know if you want these pictures, but these are for you. These are from the universe as the Hubble telescope has seen it and taken pictures since 1990. And actually, they go up to the space station and repair it. And I used to work for Lockheed Martin, and they were the ones that sent it up there. They didn't build the telescope. They did that. So this is an image, and it says the artist illustration. This is a super, supernova, supernova. So Ben, can I show it to you here first, and then I'm going to pass it back this side. And children, you may take these home with you. Thanks, Peggy. That's a supernova. Oh, I have another one, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that awesome? And this is, um, see, I don't know. This is called the Hickston Compact Group 40. And so this has elliptical planets in there. And then other, um, let me see, galaxies. Have you seen, have you gone to any movies to watch the galaxies to get together? So this is that. I'm going to pass this down this side, but they'll bring it over to you. I don't want them to fall asleep. Sorry. <laughs> so there's the galaxies. This one is now, again from the, this is called a star forming spiral galaxy along with their flashy companion, NGC 244 left, whatever. But look at that. Isn't that amazing? Amazing, amazing. So I'm going to send that back to you. Oh, I have to put it on you here. Yeah, I do. They're stuck together. OK, go pass that one back. And then this one is a composite view of x-rays, molecular gas, and warm ionized gas. Again, all from the Hubble telescope. And you can go online, look up Hubble Telescope, and you will see these pictures as well. And many, many more, because it's been taking lots of them. But this was never viewed before by us. So how awesome is that? And then the last one, I wasn't sure how many. Oh, I have two more. This is an image of the Andromeda Galaxy. How pretty is that? Okay. And then the very last one I have is a dark hole. We've all heard about those, thanks to you. So here's the dark hole, Ben. Here's the dark hole. So if you, when you get to the back, Lois, if you'll pass them over to the kids, that'll be great. Thank you. So I just wanted to share with you, Hebrews talks about our faith being in awe. These pictures certainly show us that. It's all about creation. Yeah, and who knew? When God created it supposedly in seven days, our little Pastor Kaufman used to say, might have been a little bit longer than that each one. But. Okay, let us say a prayer of thanksgiving, please. Heavenly Father, here is thanking thee this morning for your world, as large as it is, for all the galaxy, for all the stars, for us to be able to see them, especially now, every night, looking up into the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. Uh, back when I had a full-time job, I frequently get, would give uh, speeches at, at conventions and other uh, uh, venues, and uh, I was never really very concerned about it because I knew that I knew probably about as much about my topic as anybody that was sitting in the audience. Uh, but uh, having to give a, a talk about the scripture is a little more humbling. Uh, I'm a member of a men's Bible group and we meet every Thursday morning online. And we study the same passage during the week. And these other fellows are always coming up with insights 
on scriptures, maybe scriptures I've read since I was a, a small child that just, I, it was right there, it was obvious, but I never saw it. Uh, so I hope that uh, you'll bear with me today as I try to go through a little bit about uh, the story in the gospel. The theme today is something that appears several times in the gospels, uh, and that's dealing with uh, keeping the Sabbath holy. Uh, elsewhere, there's a story of a man with a withered hand who gets healed on a, uh, a, on a Sabbath day. There's the disciples who are out gathering food for themselves in the field on a, the Sabbath day. But this particular passage, or this particular story uh, that we hear in Luke, only appears in this chapter of Luke. Uh, the story of the woman who is crippled for 18 years and is healed by Jesus. Now, when I look at this, I, I, I read a lot of books, and I'm a lot into details. I like to know all the background of everything. separate places to be. Uh, so really, other than her ailment, there was nothing about her that was uh, unique or that would make her special to anyone else. But she was special. And who was she special to? Jesus. He came, he saw her, he called her out and called her over. As I said, that was pretty unique because the men and the women didn't really mix much in the uh, in the synagogue, and uh, quite frankly, uh, it, this is uh, consistent with much of Jesus's teachings, because many of his good friends, Mary, Martha, Mary Magdalene, were female, which was a bit unusual in the in the first century. Uh, so she wasn't important, probably, to the other people in the congregation, but she was important enough to Jesus that he actually refers to her later in the scripture as a daughter of Abraham. And when I did my research, I found out there's only one person in all the Bible, in the New Testament, who's referred to as a daughter of Abraham, and it's the lady in this story today. What was her response? She, her response was one of praise to God. Well, one of the other characters in the story is the leader of the synagogue. Uh, we don't know a lot about him either. In fact, he's not called the rabbi, he's not called a priest, he's just called the leader of the synagogue. So we're not exactly sure what his position is, uh, but the fact that he's probably a rabbi would be a reasonable assumption. Uh, and how does he respond? Like the other instances where the man had a healed withered hand or where the, where the uh, uh, disciples were in the field gathering food on the Sabbath, uh, he is indignant and he chastises Jesus. But I noticed, didn't notice this, this is one of those other things I didn't notice until I'm looking at it this morning. He doesn't chastise Jesus directly he yells at the crowd. He tells the crowd, it's your problem. You're not supposed to be here being healed on, on Sunday. He doesn't go directly to Jesus. Uh, to be honest, I have a little bit of sympathy for this man, which may seem a little odd, 
But here was a man who was basically just doing his job. His job, what was that? It was to lead the, lead the congregation and to enforce the rules. Well, as many of us probably know, there were lots of rules in the Jewish church, uh, Jewish organization at that time. Uh, there were many specific regulations required to clarify and further refine the Ten Commandments and the many other laws uh, of the uh, early Bible, uh, early chapters of the Bible. Uh, in fact, there's a, a uh, book called the Mishnah, Mishnah Shabbat, which lists 39 separate actions which are considered work on the Sabbath and are to be avoided. Uh, there's also limits and other uh, guides about how far you can travel on the Sabbath. There are certain items you're not allowed to touch on the Sabbath even though it, touching them doesn't constitute work. But there was just so many so many little nitpicky uh, requirements that people had to have to keep the Sabbath holy in the view of the, the uh, leadership of the church. Uh, one thing I found out that was, was interesting is life-saving intervention, that's okay. You can do that. But intervention for health matters that are not life-saving, apparently it's not really clear as to whether those are authorized or not. So what does the leader do? He takes the safe way out. When in doubt, say no. Can't do it. Reminds me of my days as a, uh, a loan officer when I had a manager who I felt uh, he knew the best way to not make a bad loan was to say no to every request that I came to him with. So it's very, very easy. You never make a bad loan if you never make a loan. <laughs> Uh, Jesus, his response to uh, uh, the, the chastisement that's put to the, the, uh, the crowd by the leader of the synagogue, he doesn't reject honoring the Sabbath. He doesn't say this isn't important. No, not at all. What he does is look at actions which are approved the action of untying your donkey, untying your ox, taking it to water, letting it, letting it feed, giving it sustenance on the Sabbath, that's permitted. And so his response is, listen, if you can help your animal and give your animal a better life on the Sabbath, so what's wrong with healing a woman who's been dealing with this uh, debilitating disease for 18 years? Uh, and he honors this woman, as I said before, by referring to her as a daughter of Abraham. Now the crowd's also here too. What does the crowd do? Uh, they rejoice, they're happy. They're, uh, uh, and the opponents, uh, not only the leader of the, the synagogue, but his support staff, they're all put to shame. As I looked at this and thought about it, I felt that Jesus' Jesus's actions are really consistent with what are considered the two great commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, check. Love your neighbor as yourself, check. He's saying look at the, look at the substance of the situation, not the form. Don't get tied up in all the little nitpicky this, that, and the other thing. Well, the other thing, another thing when I was doing the study is uh, I looked at who do I identify with in this story? Uh, well, in a way, I identify with the woman. Uh, there have been many times in my life when I've been blessed uh, undeservedly, so nothing that I did, no, nothing that I tried to do. There were a couple times in my life where uh, my continued existence was in doubt, but I pulled through and I'm here today uh, to share, share these thoughts with you. Uh, sometimes I identify with the crowd. Uh, I wasn't involved with actions 
but I'm very supportive of what's happening. I'm, I'm, I'm not the cheerleader, but I'm part of the crowd. You may be surprised that at times I identify with the leader of the synagogue as well. Uh, I'm sorry to say there are many times when I'm judgmental, when I'm looking at specific rules and you didn't follow the rules and you've got to do it this way and you've got to do it that way and not necessarily taking the approach uh, that Jesus would have us do of looking at, looking at everything and distilling it through the two great commandments. If it's honoring the God, God and treating your neighbor as yourself, it's the right thing to do. We need to act in a way that is consistent with the teachings of Jesus, and to that we can all say, Amen. Amen. Please stand for the hymn of the day, God is here. It's in the uh, with one voice, blue books, number 719.
Join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster. Let all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share God's peace. Please be seated.
abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, com comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is in the Luther Book of Worship, Praise the Lord, the Almighty, number 543. Thank you. 